Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Marsha Fikar Binti Suhaimi I'm going to present about the research work The proposal for problem number 2 In dengue viral detection and also serotype identification So problem 2 need us to identify the presence of dengue virus And at the same time classify the virus into the respective serotypes from 150 serum samples from patients because different uh, because dengue virus has different types of uh, serotypes so we need to identify uh, specifically what is the serotypes present in the uh, infected blood samples so in order to do so there are many ways actually we can use ELASA test whereby it can detect qualitatively or quantitatively. Um, usually in ELISA test to detect dengue virus, we detect the presence of NS1 antigen present in the virus and also IgM and IgG antibodies because it provides um, rapid diagnosis. Um, in addition, RT-PCR also can detect the dengue virus because molecular methods such as RT-PCR, reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction, it can uh, give the same or next day results of the dengue virus. And also viral RNA can be detected from the onset of illness and is sensitive, specific, fast, less complicated and cheaper than virus isolation methods. Sometimes uh, researchers um, use combined approach to detect and accurately prove the presence of the dengue virus. So sometimes they use detection of NS1 antigen and also can detect IgG and IgM antibody from the serum sample and further confirmed by RT-PCR to provide accurate results. So in molecular technique, we use um, four plex 10 virus serotype specific and can be detected in real time, whereby we will use four sets of primer paste and fluorogenic props, which are very specific for a single den virus serotype, but also can detect multiple genotypes and strains within the serotype. So we call it as real-time RT-PCR TechMan assay because we use um, fluorescent probe in the primers. So for the general workflow overview, first of all, we obtain the virus prototype strains and then do the virus title to determine the standard deletions for the following assay. In molecular um, technique, we will start at during the performing of ELISA rapid kit test from the 150 blood samples because we want to detect the presence of IgG, IgM and also the NS1 in the blood samples. After that, we can confirm the positive results by doing the RT-PCR but first be, be, before we perform the RT-PCR, we need to extract the RNA from the blood samples and after that, we will perform the fourplex RT PCR in this area, but we need to de we need to design the specific specific primers for the specific serotypes of the virus, which are the Den one, Den two, Den three, and Den four virus. After we get the primers, then only we can perform the RT PCR, and then we will analyze the PCR product from the assay. In the Direct detection of dengue virus using rapid commercial kit. The principle, but the principles behind it is in NS1 antigen detection. Basically, whenever a virus infect um, human, it will uh, secret non-structural protein called NS1. So that's why we specifically target for this um, detection of NS1 in the blood. For positive results, synthetic antibody in kit will capture the NS1 protein of the dengue virus. And then 
in IgG IgM detection. The synthetic antibody in kit captures the dengue virus antigen in blood. IgM will indicate the recent infection. And on the other hand, IgG, however, will indicate the past infection. Sometimes um, the blood samples from the patients will result in two test lines. So it means that this person, this specific type of blood samples, um, it means that the person already being infected twice throughout lifetime, but we cannot determine whether the person has already been recovered or not. So molecular technique is used to further confirm the dengue virus and the ser serotype identification. From the 150 blood samples from patients, assuming that all of these samples are positive, we use um, trisal kit reagent to extract the RNA. First, we use the guan guanidium thiocyanide and phenol to lyse the cells and denature the RNA enzyme. As we all know, RNA enzyme is one of the source of contamination in RNA. Um, sorry, one of the source of the denaturing of our RNA. And then after the cell being lysed, we will have all the nucleic acid being exposed in the sample, whereby we can see the protein, DNA, and RNA are all present in the same sample. So we need to separate into different phases by using chloroform. Chloroform is used because it can trap the lysed components so that it can be removed out. So basically after centrifugation, we will have RNA phase on the upper layer and the bottom layer is are the protein and DNA. Next, we will transfer the supernatant containing the RNA and then followed by precipitation by using isopropanol and then followed by centrifugation to form pellet and then RNA wash will be performed by using 70% ethanol to remove out contaminants such as salt residual which are one of the source for contamination in our RNA sample. Next, RNA suspension will be performed in RNA's free TE buffer. All of these protocols will be performed by taking precaution steps because we don't want our RNA to be contaminated with um, DNA and also we do not want our RNA being degraded by the RNA's enzyme. So, uh, also we need to store our RNA sample at negative 80 degrees Celsius to preserve RNA if analysis is not, is not taken at the same day. So now, the RNA extracted from blood samples may contain from the person's own cell or from other virus, from other bacteria or from the dengue virus. So we need to identify the specific RNA from dengue virus only. To do so, we need to design a very specific primers that can bind into the viral RNA. As we all know, virus um, genetic information contained in RNA. So we need to amplify it. In order to amplify it, we need to do the reverse transcription first because um, PCR only can amplify DNA, not RNA. So the reverse transcript test enzyme will first transcribe the DEN B virus by using specific um, DEN, DEN B primers and then subsequently we perform the polymerase chain reaction to create cDNA library. So in order to get the specific primer sequence we need to do searching on the sequence from the NCBI database because we want to design the primer. Only specific primer can bind to specific serotype of dengue virus. Then one only can be uh, bind by then one primers, then two, then three, then four, respectively, has their own primers that can bind.
and will subsequently um, be amplified in PCR. So designing the primus, primus is very crucial because if we do not get the specific primus, we will not get the PCR product. So the primus were listed as below by Barbara et al. in 2005 because they already performed this kind of test before. They managed to get four different types of primers which are specific to DEN1, DEN2, DEN3 and DEN4. And in addition, they use DEN1 probe which of FAM BHQ1 will give blue color of fluorescent um, emission. Then two, they take with prop HEX BHQ1. Then three, TR BHQ2. Then four, CY5 BHQ3. So all of these um, primer prop will give different types of color. Whenever the primers can bind to the viral RNA, it can emit um, the fluorescent signals thus can be detected by the isothermal machine. So, we actually use fourplex primers in single tube because we don't know what kind of serotype present in this patient sample, this one and also this one. So, we insert all these primers at the same time in all these samples because whenever the primers can find the specific sequence it can bind and also for the amplification will be performed by the PCR and then in the end of the PCR protocol it will create cDNA library specific for the serotypes of the dengue virus the viral load is measured by CT value can be detected in real time as props will give fluorescent signal in the isothermal machine. So after we get the positive result, we need to compare it with our control experiment. The control experiments we get from positive and also from negative. Positive control we get from real sequence of RNA virus from then then one, then two, then three, and then four. These are the real virus uh, RNA sequence. So that's why the cDNA library is very specific to um, different different type of the serotype. Negative control contain other virus strain of flavivirus or arbovirus or from negative extraction of tissue culture. So after PCR, negative control won't give any uh, emission or only can give less uh, fluorescent signal. So the list of the positive and negative control are shown below. For the negative control, we use flavivirus because it is the same family members of dengue virus and also arbovirus. All of these, most of these are the disease carried by mosquitoes. So we use this virus to compare the dengue virus um, positive results because we don't want to mix with other virus um, positive results. Negative extraction of tissue culture also being used as negative control. So the expected result will be shown like this whereby each of these serotypes is detected at different um, different fluorescent channel. For example, then one is only detected by FAM channel, then two is only detected by Texas Red channel, then three is only detected by CY5, and then four only detected by HEX channel. So these are the results um, obtained from Yong Yin Kong et al. in 2007, whereby they also performed the same serotyping um, protocols to identify the serotype in the blood samples of the patients. Y-axis indicates the intensity of the fluorescence and 
x axis indicate the cycle numbers in the um, PCR reaction. So all of this show the positive results because the curve has already exit the threshold value here. Negative control, however, cannot pass to cannot pass the threshold level over here. So the for the discussion from Barbara et al. Uh, the primary probe sets was evaluated in standard dilution of the four prototype den virus in a collection of den virus isolates and in human viromixerium specimens in just single reaction mixtures containing one primer prop sets and in the four plex mix of primers and props. The results, it can identify the serotype of the infected den virus in a single reaction mixture. The four plex real-time RT-PCR assay was optimized so that all four sets of primer pairs and the four probes labeled with the different fluorophores could be contained in a single master mixture and the real-time RT-PCR carried out in a single well. In addition, four plex is performed in closed system, the, thus um, the contamination can be avoided. In acute then virus infection, virus isolation has been the gold standard. However, many laboratories do not have virus culture capabilities or viremia may be very low so that infectious virus cannot be isolated. Hence, in conclusion, this single reaction for plex real-time RT-PCR can detect the presence of dengue virus and at the same time can identify the serotypes. So, these are the references that I made. That's all from me. Thank you.